So what is open banking? So open banking is an initiative by the Competition and Markets Authority, essentially to stimulate competition in the UK market. Traditionally, new players, new entrants into the banking sector have had to overcome high barriers of entry. Uh, and the way that the Competition and Markets Authority look to address that is by putting in open banking as an initiative. Essentially, at the heart of it is around letting customers securely share their data. And at the bedrock of uh, open banking is the way that uh, customers can do that via the standardization of what we call APIs, application program interfaces, which essentially means that all the banks and all the fintechs in the market can uh, essentially work off the same hymn sheet. Uh, and these standards have been rolled out across the industry over the past couple of years. The scope of open banking is what we would call retail accounts. So you're talking about average Joes like you and me, uh, all the way through to SMEs with probably, although it's not necessarily stipulated, but roughly a turnover of about six and a half million. So how does open banking work? So let's put this into three. First of all is uh, what the banks do. Second of all is how you get registered. And then third is what the customer sees. So the banks have put in place uh, APIs. So essentially what that means is they've made huge technology decisions in order to be able to, uh, if you like, expose customer data, but also access customer data from other third parties. Those rules in terms of how that works, you have to be governed by the OBIE. The OBIE is the Open Banking Implementation Entity. And you can either be an AISP or a PISP that sits under the OBIE. There's a lot of acronyms here. The AISP essentially means you're an account information services provider. A PISP means you're a payment initiation services provider. One means you can aggregate transaction data and customer data. The other, the payments one, means you can initiate payments from your third party, from your bank. The third element to this is a TSP, a technology service provider. And they basically provide all the rails between the banks and between the third parties to make sure that this whole system runs right. And from a consumer perspective at the end, what it gives them is the ability to be able to share their data with third parties, but crucially have the permissioning power to be able to do that. So what's happened in the UK? So the first thing to mention here is that this has been a massive undertaking, especially for the CMA9 banks. They're the initial banks who signed up to the OBIE and have actually had to pay for the implementation of open banking. The CMA9 banks have had two strands to this. One is the mandatory requirements that they had to put in place. And the secondly is the discretionary propositions that they can build on top. Massive undertaking, huge teams. If you then look at the ecosystem and you look at fintechs and how they've used open banking, what's been really, really interesting recently is a lot of new propositions that have been built off the back of using open banking data to be able to power things like authentication, KYC and credit decisioning. At the moment, industry-wide, the use cases are relatively minimal, but there is no doubt that across the next few years that will expand. From a usage perspective, and this is really key, you're looking now every month at around 140 million API calls and rising. And those API calls traditionally are to the big banks, but also to other smaller players and third parties who are now part of the ecosystem. And on those third parties, so these are the AISPs and PISPs that I previously referred to, you've seen a double in terms of the amount of those who have registered to the OBIE from about 100 and around the beginning of 2018 to now over 200 now. It shows that this is catching on. So open banking has gone global. Uh, the reason for that is that the implementation in the UK uh, has been considered a, a success. And a lot of other countries are looking to implement the same open banking provisions in their geographies. In Europe, we have something called PST2, which is the second payment services directive, which actually influenced the first iteration of the open banking requirements. They've kind of gone hand in hand, both in their conception and also their implementation. In the US, it's slightly different. There's no government regulation. So the banks essentially are taking it upon themselves to put in API standards, mainly to outlaw screen scrolling. Scraping. Screen scraping is essentially where you can just share your passwords with third parties and then you have no idea where those passwords end up. There's also been a massive hot topic in Australia. In Australia, they're looking to roll out the provision of customer data, both from a financial perspective, but across industries. And the interesting thing about Australia is now there's a big fight between actually, does it help or hinder fintechs to get rid of screen scraping? In addition to those countries, there's also a vast amount of others that are looking into it. So you're talking Japan, Singapore, South Africa are looking into it, Canada, New Zealand, 
The thing to take away from this is that open banking as an in initiative and concept isn't necessarily going anywhere and will flourish hopefully over the next few years. So where next for open banking in the UK in particular? So it's worth framing the initial scope, which was actually relatively limited, even though it was a big undertaking. It was limited to account and transaction data, uh, the ability to initiate payments, and also reference data. And the key thing now is how much more have we got to go? So how many more accounts, how much more information, how many more products will fall into scope that will allow customers to share a wider range of their financial data? If you look at this from a, I guess, a macro level, there's also an initiative called Open Finance. And this essentially would go beyond banking into things like insurance, into pensions, into investments, and allow customers actually to get a more holistic view of their finances in one place. Super cool initiative, but we're right at the beginning of that process right now. So the final piece of the puzzle is refining what we already have. So we have the AISP journey, which translates in your retail banking app possibly to account aggregation. That kind of works well, even if it's not necessarily what customers want, but it's the first step of a longer process. The second bit though, the payments initiation journey is still really clunky. The usage of it is still really, really low. Get that right, make the payments journey seamless, and OBIE would have created a new payments rail in the UK, a new way to make payments. And that is a massive, massive cost-effective benefit for SMEs, for consumers, and for the industry.